Hello, gluttoneers. Welcome back to another episode of Hi Gluttony. This episode, I am making almond extract from, I believe these are apricot pits that I had in my freezer. Any stone fruit will do, but we'll get into why that is in just a moment here. I am gonna be enjoying a pure beauty, high CBD joint and a little Pastoria Amontillado Sherry while I tell you about why I'm making almond en- extract with stone fruit pits. Becca's here in spirit. I am using my cute little, well, <laughs> cute, sexy little uh, joint holder that she sent me that's a, that's a naked lady. I enjoy that very much. I got the cutest little glass of sherry here, mostly because it has kind of an almondy flavor and I couldn't come up with a almondy cocktail right now because I'm just starting my extract and it is about three hours old. (laughs) That's a little too new to be drinking that or using it. So let me light up my joint and we'll get into what the heck is happening here. A little slip of sherry. So I have to thank my neighbor Sonnen for giving me the idea. She is a newer listener of the podcast and she listened to my plum cake episode and then came over and offered me a bunch of apricot kernels, which I turned down because I already had some apricots, but it turns out I might have to take her up on that because I was reading about having to do some changes in between when this is started and finished of the kernels so that we get a nice extraction because it's not a ton that the the recipe I used was suggesting. But the second recipe I found that I liked, I suggested changing them out every couple weeks. So hopefully she still has them in her freezer. I will be asking her for those later. This will be a time jump episode where I'm going to talk about this. And then about a month, I will, or right before I'm going to put this out, I will record my reactions, what I've done since the time of this recording, and how I think it's working. Almond extract. You cannot make it with actual almonds. There's zero flavor to it. I came across this recipe for it on a website called Forager Chef. He was pointing out that you really can't make it with almonds. And every other recipe I saw, except for the Vanilla Pura website that I found later, was saying to use almonds. And it just doesn't work. This is because originally, Bitter almonds are used to make almond extract, but they are extremely difficult to get in the U.S. and can be dangerous if handled improperly. It's not something you really want to be going out looking for. But stone fruit pits contain the same aromatics as the bitter almond. So they make a much, much more pungent almond extract than you can make with actual almonds, which it turns out is kind of impossible. I was reading one of the blogs that was talking about it. And I guess I'm a little late on this train of making almond extract at home because most of these blog posts were from the mid 2010s and and this is obviously 2024. So I'm a little behind on the, the, the trend here. It was just not something I ever really thought, oh, I, I should make that at home. Now in light of recent non-successful Papa Doms and soba noodles, you'd think maybe I would rethink this. But since this is just an alcohol infusion, I am hopeful that it will go well and I will be able to make a really delightful extract that I can use for a variety of things. The blog I found, Forager Chef, is written by a man named Alan. And I went down a nice little rabbit hole on his website because he has all the the how to make walnut wine, how to make walnut I believe he also had how to make walnut preserves on there, which I've missed the season for because it's September and it sounds like I need to be hitting the uh, walnut trees around July for those things. Since on and dropped this idea in my head, and I wasn't sure I was going to make an episode about this, but I am going to be out of commission for a couple of months. I am having a hysterectomy. I decided this would be something fast and easy I could make quick episode that I can edit while I'm convalescing, something I've not done before, and maybe maybe I want to do more. And maybe it, the flavor will be superior. I don't know. And if I can really get into foraging stuff, I can 
pick up some Sweet William, which apparently tastes like vanilla, which is something I had not necessarily thought about before, and add that in to give a vanilla note. I'm probably gonna end up putting a little vanilla bean into this as I have some kicking around. This won't be as strong as commercial types. I mean, I think they probably have way more experience. They can add other things. They know the right concentration. And my joint went out. Obviously, I don't need that anymore. So when you do use this, he recommends using it to taste, but the bare minimum is about three times as much as you would use for a commercially produced almond extract. Now, if you're a food person like me at all and have heard anything about stone fruit seeds, this would lead you to believe that this might be dangerous. Now, pits of stone fruit do contain amygdalin, I believe how you would pronounce it, which our bodies convert into benzaldehyde, benzaldehyde and hydrogen cyanide which are dangerous in high concentrations, but in low concentrations are just something that our body can get rid of. It's not really that dangerous, and the higher concentration will be left in the seed itself, which we are gonna discard at the end of this. It should be perfectly safe as long as you're not drinking the straight up vodka that you're soaking this in, or whatever alcohol you used. I bought vodka, because that's what I had available. Oh good, it's 88 proof, I hadn't checked. It did say that you want your, your alcohol to be at least 80 proof. And I was just going on faith that that was what was happening. <laughs> but I am hoping that this experiment will be successful. I also have a bit more jam to make with some plums. I will be saving the pits from whatever plums I process and see if there's a difference in the flavor or if it's really the same. But I'm, I'm pretty excited about this because it always did feel a bit of a shame to throw out all of those pits. It feels like a big waste. I've got a bunch of the outer parts of the pits right now that are sitting next to me because I had to crack them all. And I don't exactly know what I'm going to do with them, but I think I could use them as a mulch or put them around certain things. They're kind of sharp, so they might discourage some of the slugs and snails away from my uh, other plants that I grow that attract the slugs and snails. I'm always a fan of using all the bits of things, and it's very exciting about this. So let's just get into the process that I used to get to this point, and then we'll go through the we'll go through the entire process. But I will follow up later with a this is what happened. So it won't be a tasting situation today, but hopefully in the future it will taste really good. The exact recipe that I'm getting from Forager Chef is as follows. For your equipment, you need a mason jar. This one says a pint, because it's only using 12 ounces of alcohol, and a three ounces worth of stone fruit pits. That's the full pit. Approximately half a cup. I actually just used what I had available. I didn't measure them. I just used all of them, because the pits were very, very tiny. Three ounces of stone fruit pits, 12 ounces of vodka or other flavorless alcohol, 80 proof, one quarter cup simple syrup or maple syrup to be added at the end of the process. Step one, remove the fruit pits and put it into the hydrator for one, at 150 for 12 hours or until brittle. Okay, I didn't do this. <laughs> I did put it in my oven. The lowest my oven goes is 170 and I used convection bake. I also believe I put them in at 200 when I first processed all of these fruits and let them sit in the oven overnight. They were a little bit hard to crack, so I don't know that I necessarily got them as dry as they were supposed to be, but notes for next time. Step two is cracking the fruit pits and removing the stones, because it's like this little thing. It does look like a tiny little almond. Discard the shells. Use those for whatever you like. Cherry pits can be cracked or crushed whole as they're very small. Uh, pretty much during the cracking process, I smashed a bunch of mine. Most of them cracked. I use, and he says, I use the shell and seed if I'm making it with them. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, 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 sorry. I'm not reading properly. Apparently, I am a little high. So if you're using cherry pits for this, cherry pits can be cracked or crushed whole as they're very small. 
I use the shell and the seed if I'm making it with them. Don't bother if you're using cherry pits to pull those little teeny tiny nuggets out of the inside of the, uh, of the pit. Roughly chop or crush the fruit pits. As I said, part of the deshelling process crushed them up a little bit for me, so I didn't really have to do that. Put them in a mason jar, add the vodka. Oh, and it says sugar and sugar. I guess I gotta add some sugar to mine. Screw on tight, non-reactive lid, put the jar in the fridge. Oh, I gotta put it in the fridge now and allow it to infuse for four weeks. This is actually something he put at the very end. Unlike other extracts, apparently, this tastes better when you put it in the fridge. Weird. Don't know why. It's not how it should work, but that's just what he said. I've had extracts become usable after a week, but you'll want to wait a month or two for the best flavor. Okay, you got it. Strain the extract into a bottle, add the sugar or maple to, ta or maple to taste. So he's adding sugar twice. Label it with the name and date and refrigerate until needed. Discard the fruit seeds. Oh, and then the step eight is, unlike some extracts that are stored in a cool dark place, you should, this should always be refrigerated for the strongest almond flavor. Weird. I want to know the science behind that, but I couldn't find anything. On food and cooking was really general on what was going on with that. Notes on this recipe. Alan says, homemade almond extract isn't as strong as commercial. A good rule of thumb is to use two teaspoons per cup of dairy or three times the amount almond extract you typically use. Mostly I add it to taste. Next, for drinks, I add it to taste. One port noyo, noyo to three parts other liquors is a good place to start. Just like cinnamon, it is used in small amounts as a flavoring. If your almond extract looks a little cloudy, strain it through a double thickness of cheesecloth or a straw or, or a coffee filter moistened with vodka. I'm not going to be that fussed about my thing being cloudy. It is already looking cloudy. So I'm not that worried about that. Everclear will make a slightly stronger extract due to the higher alcohol content. Or if you live where I live in California, it's not actually higher proof than anything else. Good luck if you can get it at that higher proof le level, but otherwise just stick with what you got. So I've got mine in a cute little mason jar. I had a lot of fun whacking all those pits earlier today and sifting through to find all my little flavorful goodies. And yeah, I think that's it for this part of the episode. I will follow up with notes and I'm, I'm very excited to see how this turns out because I love almond flavor. Yeah, this could really become a thing for me. We will see. We are back. Well, I am back with my notes on my completed almond extracts. Let's start with the pits that I used out of my cupboard that were not frozen. We're not adding a lot of almond flavor. They didn't have an intense smell. When I had done the plum pits after I processed the rest of my jam, they definitely had a really distinct almond aromatic to it. For whatever reason, cold does seem to be a key to preserving that almond flavor in those pits. You wanna use them as fresh as possible or if they're frozen. I still have an S on in. It's been a whole month for the <laughs> her pits. That's all right because I, got, I had just enough to finish what I was doing. And yeah, it has a really nice almondy aromatic to it. So I'm very, very excited about the results here thinking I might make some almond extract to send out for Christmas, as yes, I've had my hysterectomy surgery now, and I'm a week in to recovery. Seems to be going pretty well. I've got nothing to do but sit around, so I'd have time to roast up those almond, uh, well, sorry, not almond pits, but pits, and then spend time cracking them and putting them into alcohol. And that'd be a nice, easy thing. It's, uh, it's something a little more interesting to send to some of my more culinarily inclined gift recipients. I, I say this is one of those things that you can go ahead and do if you're sitting on a plethora of, of pits or if you really like stone fruit and can save up even a small amount. 
making your own at home is super easy, hands off. I actually didn't add any simple syrup to mine or sugar. I've just left it as it is. Doesn't mean I can't add it or I wouldn't add it. I just haven't because I'm still in recovery. So most of my time is spent sitting on my ass playing video games right now. So just wanted to finish up this episode and get it out to the world to tell you that, yeah, I, I like making my own almond extract, especially give me an excuse to crack open a bunch of pits. It's exciting times for me. All right. Well, thank you for joining me again, gluttoneers, and I will see you in the future. Off we go. I don't have my coconuts, but... And not as exciting as clapping together cheeses, but, you know, do what I can from the chair that I'm in. <laughs>